r slash dating over 30. Here Ething says. If you were to make a good dating app, what would it look like? The old apps are depressing me so much today. I saw a thread earlier where people were talking about the possibility of an algorithm which shows you your best matches after you've stepped away for a while, perhaps just as you're on the precipice of going exclusive with someone, just to reel you back in. Just for the fun of it, I thought we could together imagine what a good dating app might look like one that could actually help us find the right match instead of not. Ideas. Competitive Sleep 93 says. Reviews. Sukebigo says. There was an online game I played years ago where, if you got reported enough for cheating or bad behavior your account was locked into special servers filled with only bad actors and cheaters. I'm thinking something like this could be implemented on a dating app, have a review and report system, where the reviews are able to be contested and manually reviewed before going into effect, but if a profile receives enough bad reviews or reports it gets stuck matching with other people like them. Ghost too many people. Guess what, now you only match with other people who like to ghost each other. Running a bot account to scam people. Have fun matching with nothing but other scam bot accounts. Using your profile to advertise social media or of. I guess you'll have to advertise to other influencers. Acting creepy. Welcome to Creepsville, population, you and all of the other creepy people. You would obviously need to build in some method for determining if someone is evading a ban and probably include a robust appeals process, but the risk of being stuck with other bad actors might be enough to weed out a lot of the bad behavior that people seem to engage in on dating apps. Watch and Workaholix says. I'd like something similar to the movie The Lake House. So it would be an app that would be specifically for tablets, but you write to each other. Could have options to play games too like Pictionary, Tic Tac Toe, or something that is engaging. But you can judge a person by how they write and really what they would write about it. In the day and age of AI and chatgpt, this would be more real and authentic. We would come full circle y'all. Future Shop 384 says. They all spam you with membership requests as soon as you open them. And usually they want 3 months $75 up front for a few extra features. It's a business all they care about is money. R slash dating over 30. Post alone 232 says. On again off again with my crush. M35, my high school crush, and I can't seem to get our timing right. We've been on two first dates. We're talking first dates, didn't even make it to second or third date. After going no contact she seems to like to check in on me every few years. Literally makes my heart skip when I see her in my DMS, but I do have high blood pressure so could be that lol. Obviously something's there if she decides to reach out again. How many times are you willing to rest out with someone? Could you ever date someone knowing that they chose others over you? How easy would it be for her to choose someone over me if we were to develop a relationship? I'm just having a hard time wrapping my head around these questions. My gut's telling me one thing. I've decided to go no contact, but can't help but wonder if history will repeat itself again. How would you respond if the situation ever presented itself? I can't help it, I really am attracted to her, but I don't want to go down as the next best option either. Time will tell. Wag says. Sounds like she's touched you before, but now that she's 35, lost her SMV, probably feeling lonely, and lowered her standards, she's reaching out again. Doesn't sound very flattering to me. Axius says. The whole you just never know stuff will keep you stringing yourself along. The only facts you need are. 1. You have already told her how you feel. 2. She has kept doing this even knowing that, without giving you a concrete answer. I'm going to hazard a guess, that when you told her how you felt, she didn't shut you down. I'm also going to hazard a guess that, even though you've gone no contact, you are doubting if it's right, and if she does make contact somehow, you'd probably give it another shot. 
I used to have an on slash off experience similar to this. I was always convinced that they'd change eventually, even if evidence suggested otherwise. She'd emerge, we chat loads, phone calls till silly hours, meetups, and essentially love a bombing me. Then it would end, and she would disappear. The last time she did it, it turned. Out she had had a kid and just wanted the not interested father to be jealous and give her attention, then vanished again. It took me a while to get over that, but it gave me clarity to make sure it doesn't happen again. The point is that she's disappearing for a reason. She's on and off for a reason. If she liked you properly, she wouldn't disappear for such long periods because it would affect her as much as it would you. Look at the facts of it rather than the narrative. Look at how she is acting, rather than how you'd like things to seem, and I think you'll see yourself. Treat her like you would a friend, if you want to, but in the long run, it will most likely be you who gets hurt, if you wait around trying for a relationship. Peach Peach 13610 says. Op, she is reaching out, because she is desperate for retention. Once she gets her ego boost, off she goes. Please stay away from toxic people like that, and as a rule of thumb always assume the worse, she reaches out to me, because no one else is giving her attention ATM, rather than the best, unless very solidly backed up by actions. r slash dating over 30. Responsible Snow 216 says. Do I have unrealistic expectations? I got out of a long term relationship and I have no idea what dating is like in 30s. I've always dated troubled women who are mentally unstable due to their medical conditions such as depression, anger issues, BPD, etc. I have a very soft spot for troubled women because I grew up watching my father abusing his women. I think I was healing my childhood trauma by helping them. But now I'm in my mid 30s, and I need to look for someone who's mentally healthy. I haven't dated in a long time and I've never had expectations. This would be my first time dating with specific expectations of a woman. Could you please tell me if I'm being too picky or being unrealistic? Any advice would be appreciated. My expectations are, I'm basically looking for someone like me, backslash, good mental health backslash, calm vibe backslash, has a healthy lifestyle, Aka taking care of herself. Just a little bit physically active at least, and eating healthy. No addiction, spending issues, eating disorder, etc, backslash, average or cute looking, attraction still somewhat matters you know? No need to be hot, backslash age 20s or 30s, preferably 30s because of more life experience, but 20s can be mature and experienced too, backslash, preferably someone who has no kids. Hamzagi Fucked says. Average or cute looking women have 100s, if not 1000s of options to date. The dating scene isn't like it used to be in the 90s, when women sought compatible matches. Any woman can date male models types and just super hot men in general, so factor that in your preferences. If you're average looking, aim for women who are below average. Lefasm says. Like others said, having mental health issues can be fine if they are managed and you shouldn't go in the relationship thinking I'm going to solve her problem and be her white knight. You should just consider how it impacts your relationship and see if you are fine with it or not. Sanchint Avocado says. A big red flag for me on dating apps is when men present the information you stated in your post. It sounds like too much savior complex and not enough self-reflection. If you aren't in therapy I suggest starting there. Hera from Aliahan says. Look around the posts on this sub. Baggage is the rule rather than the exception at this age bracket. You could date a little younger, mid late twenties, if you want to be a little safer. General so 81 says. The woman you just described, could have any man she wants. An author writer 2176 says. So, you. Dated troubled women to heal your own mental health and now think they are not good enough for you? It's very valid, 
to not want to date someone who isn't successfully managing their mental health. A lot of the conditions you listed are lifelong struggles that take a lot of work to manage. But any relationship is going to have challenges, so I would think about that when checking off some dream bucket list. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but if you're in your mid-30s I would say dipping any younger than 27 over 28 is a bit of a red flag to me. Banana Stand Broke says. Those are realistic expectations and the majority of them are just basic standards really, not at all unreasonable. Those are really just basic life skills and healthy living. I do think it may be a numbers game finding single women that age with all those traits combined as a considerable percent of that demographic will likely be married. People in their 30s will have more life experience and the wisdom baggage that comes with that. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.